Kay Jamison, and I teach at Johns Hopkins, and I'm co-director of the Mood Disorder Center there. My specialization is the study and treatment of mood disorders, particularly bipolar illness. I think I'm here at MGH because I have written about my own experiences with bipolar illness, and I've also written about the experiences of my husband as a psychiatrist who died of cancer, and the kind of issues that come up, psychological issues and, and so forth with cancer care. I think probably the questions I have are, you know, how can we do things better? How can we make it easier for people who have serious mental illnesses to get cancer care, not alienate or put off the people who are treating them for cancer, and to make sure that the people who are treating them for the psychiatric illnesses mesh with the oncology services. I think the program here at MGH is terrific and first class and really, you know, I think is going to be a model for a lot of cancer centers and psychiatric centers. I think people tend to focus on one or the other and what she and her center have done beautifully is to, you know, mesh the two. I'm always surprised when support comes from the top, but that's sort of deeply cynical view. I, th I think it's great that MGH has been supportive. I think it's really important. I think because MGH is MGH, it can act as a, as a, you know, an example to how the rest of the world, how it can be done. So I think it's terrific. Well, I think, you know, I'm from Johns Hopkins. I think Johns Hopkins is great. I mean, I think that we do, I think we do mood disorders extremely well and cancer extremely well. Um, you know, there's always a lot that could be more connected than it is. I think that's true for most places. I mean, I think good medicine is based on collaboration. However you, however you cut it, however you define it, however you illustrate it, good medicine depends on doctors talking to patients and asking them what they need, patients being forthcoming with doctors and nurses and social workers about what they need, uh, everybody being just straightforward and caring and, and really knowledgeable about the situation. I think that that's true for any branch of medicine. There have been studies um, by a few anthropologists of psychiatric care and how it's delivered. Nothing that's been terrific. I think it's, I think anthropologists have the advantage of coming at it from a, a distance and coming at it from the perspective of a lot of different cultures and a lot of different ways of going through life. And I just think that, you know, you've, you here at Harvard, there, there's a huge and very good social psychiatry program that's chock full of anthropologists and psychiatrists. And I think it just would be an interesting use of, of them and their minds and experience to have them come look at a, a different kind of subculture. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's more coming in and having a different kind of observation. Interdisciplinary just kind of is a, one of those mushy terms that means everybody kind of interacts with everybody else. Um, I think that having uh, someone like anthropologists or, or people from economists from the business school, different perspectives observing and looking at it is sort of different from, they're not becoming a part of the system. The whole point of them would be to be outside the system and observing.